Hey scholars, it's good to be back with you. Today I'd like to talk a little bit about Poisson's ratio. Now, I got a question about this the other day and that seems like a pretty good topic for a video. Poisson's ratio in concept is pretty easy. If there's a problem with it, it's that it's kind of the introduction into 3D solid mechanics for a lot of students. And solid mechanics can get a little gnarly. The math can be complicated and the uh, concepts can be pretty abstract. The good news is that at least in one dimension, Poisson's ratio is pretty simple to understand. So let's start there. We're, for this video, we're just going to do one dimension. So in concept, what's going on is if I take a stick here, and this is just a stick, it's a dowel, and I pull on it with enough force, it'll stretch this way. And as it stretches this way, it actually, its uh, diameter will go down a little bit. Okay, that seems intuitive. Let's pause and do a quick experiment with a rubber band because rubber bands are nice and stretchy. The deformations are large, so you don't need any special instrumentation or anything to see what's going on. You just draw a grid on it and go. So let's do that real quick. Here's a little grid I've drawn on a real thick piece of rubber band here. And let's see what happens when I pull on the rubber band. I'm going to offset it here a little bit. Okay. Got longer, also got narrower. Let's try that again. That sure looks like Poisson's ratio. Okay, now Poisson's ratio is a number, it's non dimensional. And for that number to make any sense, to have any meaning to us, uh, we have to define it. So let's start with that. Poisson's ratio is defined by the Greek letter nu. Now, why that's called nu, I don't know, but that's what that is. And it's a ratio of strains. It's lateral strain divided by longitudinal strain. And notice it's the absolute value of those for most, almost all practical materials. Uh, Poisson's ratio is positive. There is such a thing as a negative Poisson's ratio, but it's very, very rare. So what's lateral over longitudinal mean? Well, longitudinal is in the direction of stretching of that rubber band, and lateral is going across the, uh, the axis of the rubber band. On my little stick here, that's longitudinal, that's lateral. Okay? So, and again, we're just dealing with 1D problems right now. We're dealing basically with sticks for, the, for this video. So how do you write that? Well, it kind of depends on how you decide to draw it. If we have a little stick here of material, and this could be just about anything, rubber, plastic, wood, whatever, we're going to call that the x-axis. Up there is the y-axis, and out this way is the z-axis. And we just, we're just doing that, so we've got a right-handed coordinate system. Remember, rotate x into y, your thumb goes out z. So that's a right-handed coordinate system. So lateral strain is strain either in the x or the, or the y or the z direction. So let's write the y direction there. And uh, lateral is in the x direction. Now, remember, if you stretch this way, if you stretch in the x direction, the material actually gets smaller in the y and the z direction. So this is going to come out negative if we don't do something. And the thing we're going to do is simply just put a minus sign in there. So again, Poisson's ratio is always positive. So that's the definition of Poisson's ratio. Well, the implications of it are a little more involved in that. We can touch on some of those. So let me erase this real quick. And let's talk about volume change. When you pull on a piece of material and it gets a little smaller, does the volume change or not? Well, for almost all materials, the volume does change. And here's the expression. There's the change in volume. Make sure I got this right here. 1 minus 2 nu times the original volume times the strain. Okay? And uh, we're, again, we're assuming one direction, so it's the, the, the longitudinal strain there. And this, is, this, this term only becomes 0 if nu is 1 half. So typical values for nu, typical values for the, the Poisson's ratio is between 0, 0.0, 0 
and 0 0.5. Well, if 0 0.5, let's see, 2 times 0 0.5 is 1, 1 minus 1 is 0. So this right here means no volume change. And there aren't very many materials that are truly incompressible. You actually, if you look in the books, you actually see rubber as one of those. So there, for almost all uh, metals, plastics, and things, you will have a volume change. And it's typical to see, the, the ones you see typically are, if new is in the range of 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, those, those are pretty uh, typical values. So this is, the relationship, or this is the relationship that shows you the volume change. Okay, and the re last relationship you'll need is the relationship between the elastic modulus and the shear modulus. It stands to reason that if a material is stretching and com uh, in one direction, compressing in the other, there's got to be some kind of shear uh, action in there somewhere, and there, there is. So there, there's, a, there's a simple relationship between elastic modulus and shear modulus. Elastic modulus 2 times the shear modulus minus 1 times 1 over 1 minus nu. So that's the relationship between elastic and shear. Now if you want to take a deeper dive into this, if you, and if you want to start looking at what happens when you've got truly three-dimensional uh, strain fields, the relationships get a little more complicated, and you'll typically see those written out in uh, matrix form. So, but that's probably for another video. For right now, this is enough to get the basic idea of Poisson's ratio. So I hope this helps. We'll talk to you next time.